Hey there, I'm Elena with Black Sheep 303 Creative, and today I'm going to show you how to make some really cute and fast uh, sublimation ornaments using these MDF ornament blanks that I got from Amazon. So, there are, it's pretty straightforward, and I put vinyl on the back of one of them just to kind of finish it off, but we'll talk about that later. So I'm going to put these to the side. All right, so first what you're going to need is a set of ornament designs, circular, size to fit your ornament blanks. So my ornament blanks are three inches, and I have sized these designs to just a tiny bit larger than that. I did 3.1, um, just so I've got a little bit of overlap because you do want the design to go all the way to the edge. And if you're trying to line up the edges of a circle really, really exactly with the edges of this circle, it's going to be tough to get it totally perfect. So that's why I suggest making your designs a little bit bigger than what you actually need so that when you put your ornament on it, you'll have a little bit of play as far as uh, the edges go. And obviously you need to print this out on a sublimation printer using sublimation ink. So I have an, a Canon EcoJet or EcoTank printer that I've converted using Hippo sublimation ink and I am using a sub sublimation paper. You can kind of see there. And uh, these designs are mine. So uh, you'll be able to get these at my Etsy store or you can always find other sublimation designs on places like Creative Fabrica or you know Design Bundles and those kinds of sites always have great uh, round ornament designs that you can sublimate pretty easily. You could also, if you don't have a sublimation printer, you could print this on printable vinyl and um, just stick it onto an ornament front. Or you could also print this on cardstock and then print multiple layers of, say, like white circles and just layer them together to make sort of a stiff, thick, round ornament. That would work too. So those are some alternates if you don't have access to sublimation materials. But what you want to do after you've printed them out, and you do want to make sure that you mirror the designs if it matters before you print them out because we do place the designs front side down onto the ornament to uh, sublimate it. So if you have words on your ornament, for example, it will matter whether you mirror it or not. These are all kind of just scenes, so it's not super important. But if you do have words, you do want to make sure that you mirror the design before you print it out. So what you want to do, obviously, is cut these down uh, to kind of a circular size to basically fit your ornament blank, you know, obviously with a little bit extra. These ornament blanks I got off of Amazon, they are MDF, so they're very lightweight, and they do have a protective coating on them, or um, like a, a sheet, I guess, I don't know what do we call that. So you do have to peel that off on both sides before you sublimate, obviously. And it can be a little bit tricky. And I did notice that when you pull the sheet off, you do kind of mar up the surface a little bit. It doesn't seem to affect the design when you do it, but um, just I, that's why I'm kind of doing it towards the top only, because I, I figured that was the area that matters the least in terms of the you know perfectness of the of the sublimation so i'm doing it kind of right around the ornament hanger just so if anything gets messed up it'll probably be covered by the ornament hanger that i'm going to put in there the, th the uh, thread okay so then what i like to do is kind of eyeball where is the middle and up and then place the ornament blank down on top of the design so that it's going to be basically centered and facing the correct direction when we go to sublimate it. And then I kind of hold it in place and what I like to do is cut slits into the paper all the way around so that it makes it easier to fold the circle around the edges of the ornament. And then if you want to, you can start to kind of push them up 
so that it's harder to harder for the ornament to shift once you've got it kind of in place. Then what you're going to need is some heat resistant tape and we're going to tape the design to the back of the ornament. So like I mentioned before, the design is face down on the ornament and then we're going to tape the edges. And I will note that it's better to tape over the hole in the ornament completely because with these ornament blanks, the ink from the sublimation print does like to leak through onto the back when you're sublimating. So if you tape over that entirely, that seems to minimize that issue. So that's why I'm taping over this completely. So I tend to go a little nuts on taping, but <laughs> you want to just make sure that the the design is really, really touching. It's like holding down really well all the way around all of the edges. That way you'll avoid any like ghosting or um, errors on the sides. So you may not need to tape quite as much as I am, but I like to go a little bit crazy. Okay, so you can see that I've got it really sealed down pretty nicely. The back doesn't look nearly as good, but that's okay. It just matters that the edges are all like really well covered on the front. And then you would just repeat the same procedure for however many of these you plan to do. And I'm going to do four. Okay, so once you have all of them taped and you're happy with how they're taped up, you're ready to heat set them, actually sublimate them. You, uh, you want to make sure that what you were doing is you were placing them down on like your heat press or your heat mat. Now I'm using my, a mat, Cricut mat, with my Easy Press 2. Sublimation does require quite a bit of pressure. So that's why I'm going to use my Easy Press 2 because I find that I get better results when I can personally just lean on it and, and create the pressure that's necessary. Although the um, he, my auto heat press does work for this with an extra pillow. And I'm sure other uh, heat presses where you can set the pressure, uh, you would be able to do get a great result too. Now, you're going to be placing these so that the design is on top, facing down. Then you want to put a piece of cardstock over that. That's just to sort of protect your surface from ink transfer that can happen with the sublimation paper. Then on top of that, I'm going to place a Teflon sheet. Butcher paper, parchment paper would work as well. Now my Easy Press 2 is being set, it's set to 400 degrees for 60 seconds. And it's high pressure. So I'm going to like lean all my pressure, like my body weight basically, onto the Easy Press as I'm pressing it onto the ornament. So you're, my head's probably going to get in the way here. That same setting also works with the auto press from HTV Rot, 400 degrees for 60 seconds. Your you know, heat press that you've got may vary, so I would suggest you know you just look up MDF ornaments sublimation to kind of see what the setting is that you want to have your heat press set to if you're using something else. Okay, it's ready to go. So I'm just going to lift up, set it down. Hit the green button to start it. Okay, you do want to do this in a pretty vent well ventilated area because it is a little bit stinky, like there's some fumes that come off of it. And then I'm going to wait for my ornaments to completely cool before I do anything, just because sometimes when things are still a little bit hot with sublimation ink, you can transfer ink kind of accidentally sometimes. So I tend to be a little bit extra cautious <laughs> and wait until they're completely cooled before I check them. So I'll come back when they're ready to go. Okay, I took them off the mat to let them cool off faster. And these are mostly cool now. So I'm going to start 
peeling off the tape. I think the putting the tape on and removing the tape is the part that takes the longest. <laughs> and if you don't have any fingernails, like I do not, it's a little bit trickier. <laughs> now, if you're careful, you can reuse the tape. Like just peel it carefully off the paper. I'm not gonna bother. So pretty cute. All right, I'll get the rest of these unwrapped and then we'll see what we've got. Okay, they all came out pretty awesome. <laughs> so now let's talk about finishing them off. Okay, so how do you wanna finish these off? Because the backs are gonna be blank or mostly blank, maybe a little bit of ink on the back. So I would suggest uh, you could write something on the back if you want to. This is a glossy coating on the surface. So just um, get something that's gonna be definitely permanent on that glossy of a surface. I don't know, like a paint pen maybe or a Sharpie. But I kind of find permanent vinyl is a nice alternative. So all I did was print out a little, you know, Merry Christmas 2023 but you could use these for any number of different things. You could make them into gift tags. You could use them as like place card holder or placeholders for a holiday dinner. They could be gift tags on, on gifts, you know, so you could have two from, totally, you know, there are lots of possibilities. So you can also use the same method to make holiday coasters if you get just larger sized round MDF without the hole. They would make cute coasters too. But I'm going to put the Merry Christmas 2023 on the back. So I'm taking a piece of paper transfer tape. So I weeded this out. I cut it out on my Cricut and then I weeded it. And I'm going to use this paper transfer tape. It doesn't have to be paper transfer tape. Um, you can use whatever you've got. Just burnish the tape down well to the vinyl because we're going to peel the backing off the vinyl here to expose the adhesive on the back. And my paper tape is pretty old, so it doesn't really want to stick real well. And then I find trimming it down so you've really got kind of an outline of the words is very helpful for placement. And you're just going to peel off the backing sheet. And now again, make sure you got it um, right side up or, you know, facing top. And then just burnish it down again. It's pretty easy to put words down. You don't have to worry too much about like air bubbles or anything with words and small shapes. I don't usually ever have a problem. And then you can just peel the paper tape off of the top. And then if you're concerned about like the ink that's showing, you could put a bow on it if you want. I would say you want to put some kind of hanger. I'm a fan of Baker's twine, so <laughs> I like to cut, I don't know, eight to 10 inch piece, fold it in half. Then I feed the, the loop from the back to the front and then feed the string through. And that kind of finishes it off nicely. And then if you want to, you can add like a bow to the front, but then you just tie this in a knot. And there you go, finished ornament. And so you could do any number of different things on the back of these to make them your own, to use them in whatever way you like, to personalize them for the recipients. But they're really fun and super easy. Like I would say it's maybe taken me an hour to make all of these and it would have, I could have made more very easily. Like you just get them ready to go and then do them in batches, heat set them in batches. And you have a whole bunch of like little gifts for coworkers, neighbors, kids, all kinds of different people. Um, this makes a really quick and easy present. Uh, these designs are available on my Etsy shop and you will be able to get one set of three for free with the coupon I'm showing here. The holiday designs available on my Etsy shop include the holiday villages you see on the left or the, hol the Christmas gnomes that you see on the right. There are also holiday city scenes that you see on the left or the Nordic animal designs you see on the right here. And finally, we've got 
uh, blue and gold Christmas villages on the left or three snowy animal scenes on the right. So there you go. I hope that helps you this holiday season and have fun making some sublimation ornaments. If you liked the video, I'd really appreciate it if you could give me a thumbs up and leave me a comment. That really helps out my channel and doesn't cost you anything. So thanks so much for watching. Happy holidays!